this tutorial, we will go over the best practices and tips for using dFlickr in Premiere Pro to get the best results. This complements our other tutorials about specific features of dFlickr that work the same in all applications. So watch the other tutorials about specific features, and if you're using Premiere Pro, check out these tips that are specific to use in Premiere Pro. Let's get started. First thing, if you're using high frame rate footage such as 240 frames per second, note that even if you make a sequence from your 240 frames per second movie, you can't export higher than 60 frames per second. So what you should do is interpret footage. You can do this two ways. If you're just going to do this with one clip, you can make a new project and within that project you first need to interpret your footage. You do this by going to File, Modify, Interpret Footage. You choose your frame rate here such as 29.97. Then you make a new sequence from Clip. This will ensure that the frame rate matches the frame rate you set in Interpret Footage. Note, if you just drop your 240 frames per second footage into your 29.97 frames per second sequence and skip the interpret footage step, then you'll drop frames. The media preferences can be set up if there are multiple clips to import that need to be interpreted, so you don't have to remember to do that each time. You just go to Edit, Preferences, Media. So that's just an option instead of going to interpret footage each time. Note, prior to Creative Cloud, image sequences had no interpret footage. The controls were grayed out, so the value used came from the preferences media value. If you use Creative Cloud, it's still good to know how to change this setting if you have multiple clips since you can set a particular value as the default interpretation. You would need to set the media preferences before importing the footage, then make a new sequence. There's one more thing you should understand before we move on to the tips. Timebase is the timecode base. There is no such thing as timecode above 60 frames per second. So if you import a 240 frames per second movie, you cannot set timecode basis above 60. This has no effect on anything except timecode display. You can work in frames. Keep in mind that Premiere cannot render 240 frames per second as we already mentioned. So just interpret footage as we discussed earlier. Now that you have your sequence set up properly, we can talk about some tips for working with the dFlickr plugins in Premiere Pro. Tip 1. If you look at the dFlickr plugins, you'll see auto levels, high speed, and time lapse. You'll also see a little icon next to each of these plugins. The icon says 32. This is the maximum bit depth that can be used. But in order for you to utilize this enhanced bit depth, there's another step you need to take. You need to go to the sequence settings and check the maximum bit depth box. Tip number two. When you set your reference frame using add frame, first set time display to frames and note that the number will only match your timeline if your clip starts at frame zero of the timeline. This is because the time is relative to the clip and not the timeline. Even if the clip starts further down the timeline, or I decide to change the endpoint, we are still in the same place on the clip in local time. It's relative to the first existing frame of the source clip. If this is confusing and you want to work with the frame value matching the timeline, you can select the clip on the timeline, right mouse click, and choose Nest from the pull down menu. Once the clip is nested, you can double click to go inside the nested clip. Now the clip's first frame matches the first frame of the timeline display. You can add your effect before you nest the sequence or after. There is no difference in the result. Tip number three, dFlickr auto levels. If you have a very long clip and you would like to analyze a small portion of that clip, even if you try to fake out auto levels by dragging the in and out points around the section you want to analyze, it will analyze the entire source clip. The way to apply auto levels to a section of your source clip is to cut the section at the in and out points, and then if you nest the cut section and apply auto levels, you'll have your section starting at zero, and the frame values will match those of the timeline. If you want to apply the other dFlickr plugins, time lapse and high speed, 
You can just animate the time window to zero where you don't want the effect to be applied. So this tip is only for auto levels. Tip number four. Another thing you can do is animate cuts. Say you have a sequence that has a few clips in it and you want to apply deflicker to each of the clips. You could apply deflicker, and this relates to all three plugins in the deflicker product, to each clip, or you can select all the clips and right mouse clip and nest the clips. Now you can apply the deflicker plugin of your choice just one time. The way you can tell deflicker internally that there are three different clips is to use the mark segments menu. You will just select the stopwatch to activate animation and choose cut A and then at the next cut you'll choose cut B and cut C for the next and so on. Note that the cut letter A, B, or C is arbitrary as long as it's different each time. This will tell Deflicker internally that there's a new clip and it needs to recognize the transition point. Hopefully with these tips and the other Deflicker tutorials, you'll get the most use out of the Deflicker product in Premiere Pro.